You could not have mass produced something like this even just five years ago, but now you can. And in this video, we're gonna go through the actual design of this part and what it would be competing against. So first of all, let's go ahead and look at what it's competing up against. Normally, this kind of part would be manufactured with injection molding. And the problem with injection molding is that you have the molds. And even more so with this part, since it's a mechanism where you have an interior slider and then a spring and all this other stuff, you have to make it in multiple parts. Very often it's two clamshell pieces that sandwich together and then you have the latch in between. So you have to have three molds or a three cavity mold to at least hold those three pieces. But overall, it's just a complex system where you'd be spending somewhere between two and $15,000 to make a simple little plastic part. But then you have to realize that there's also all the downstream costs. You have the assembly of those pieces, the error rate within those pieces, transportation of those pieces, because in order to amortize the cost of the mold, you have to produce hundreds of thousands of them, because again, you have that big old upfront cost. Not to mention the fact that once you commit to the mold, that design is literally set in stone. So producing this with molding creates a lot of complexity if you're in a company or a startup where you want a lot of design flexibility, or you're in a company that's evolving quickly and trying to meet the new needs of customers. All of those issues are solved with mass production 3D printing, which is what we do here at Slant 3D. But if you're making something like this for 3D printing, the rules have entirely changed. You no longer want to use your injection molding designs to make them with 3D printing. You would have a lower quality product if you attempted to print injection molded designs. So let's go ahead and actually break down how to do this so that we can make a part that is actually better. Well, first of all, since 3D printing is additive, you're able to create really complex geometries that are enclosed so that you have multiple parts inside of one single print. And that's basically what we did here. We designed the outer box of this latch, and then we designed the small latch inside of it. This way, you basically have a ship inside of a bottle that you could never manufacture before. Now we're able to have the handle sticking out the side and integrate a spring. And now the spring is a really interesting deal because normally that spring would come in from the side and would actually wobble in this direction. That is the way you would shoot it inside of a mold. Since we're using 3D printing, we're gonna be printing it up on its long edge. The reason for this is so that it is easily knocked off of the machine so that you can produce hundreds of thousands of them affordably. If you lay it down flat, then you end up with an issue where it potentially doesn't auto eject very well. And you also have issues with the smoothness of the latch. So you wanna print on that small side. This creates a much more reliable print, a much more manufacturable print, and ensures that all of the interior mechanisms align right. But the spring, the spring now has to be designed in the opposite direction so that it is a vertical spring rather than horizontal. So the wobble is going along the vertical there, so you still have the compression. And you can readjust how hard or soft this spring is by either changing the thickness of it or changing the number of coils it has. All of that is adjustable. Now the latch itself, since we have the tongue of the latch sticking out the edge, we go ahead and chamfer that, which is great because it's necessary anyway so that this can work as a door latch closing in on something there. And then the tongue of this latch is actually inside of the box and you have the roof of the box. If you're doing large spread spots, then you can end up with sag and sag could create an interference within the parts inside themselves as they're moving over each other. So in order to prevent that type of a sag, don't have horizontal surfaces. If you can, have them come to a point or to a ceiling of some sort. And that's what we did here. We basically created a chamfer on the roof of the outer box and the roof of the tongue itself. And this ensures that there is no overhang that can cause any sort of interference issues. And that way, again, you have a very robust part that can be mass produced. And then we have the handle coming out the side and the handle is a very simple little deal there. But then the other thing that has to be done is you have the mounting holes. The mounting holes are pretty easy, but if you wanted to reinforce those so that screws going in don't end up splitting the part, you can go ahead and add a collar around each one of those holes. This reinforces the part and you just make sure that everything moves around it. It's not that hard. One other thing about this that is also fairly challenging is the spot where the handle is sliding through. That is an overhang that would end up causing sag and interference. So how do you deal with that? Well, normally people would say, ah, go ahead and generate support inside of there. That's the wrong solution. You never want to have auto-generated supports when optimizing for manufacturing. Everything should be in the CAD file. That way you know it's universal. That way you can print it through our API or just send it to us and know you're gonna get back what you need. It eliminates any sort of interpretation issues. So the way to design the supports is you basically just design a block straight into it. You have a 0.3 spacing on top and a 0.3 spacing on the bottom, and then you just have it be the thickness of 
of the part that it's supporting. And what's great about this is that you can actually put instructions on that block, like remove, and then those instructions indicate to the technician, oh, we need to pluck that out. That way you don't have to worry about is it going to be supported or not because you don't have to design the whole part and then design the slicing parameters for the part. You just design the part and then the thing plucks right out with generic settings. It's much more reliable and much more robust because you also have support exactly where you want it as opposed to where we think it's supposed to go. And with complex pieces like this, support can become very tricky because there's areas that you might consider need to have support that actually don't, and you know that better because it's your design. So when using support, make sure you use design support, and there's ways to do it intelligently so that it's very efficient and quick. And then last of all, we went around, we chamfered and filleted everything to make sure that you don't have elephant foot or any sort of extrusion issues and that kind of thing. And then we just did a final touch up and now you go ahead and print it. And once you print it, you have this really awesome mechanism that can be produced for the same or less cost than the mold. You don't have the upfront cost, you have design flexibility, and you have all of this stuff already assembled and ready to go so that a full latch does not have to go through a secondary processes. It can come off a machine, go right into a box, go right to a customer, and you know it's more reliable because you don't have human error in all those other steps that other manufacturing processes would have. You're actually able to create a product that was never possible before, and now you can create all kinds of new features that your competitors don't have. If we were to go through and refine this a little bit more, we could change how much the return of it is. We can mess around with the dimensions of it all and reinforce some other features. We could also apply an outer texture in order to eliminate layer lines. But overall, this is a good demonstration of how a 3D printed solution can end up being more optimal than an injection molded option because you don't have to deal with all the side constraints of traditional manufacturing and you end up making it better, faster, and cheaper. Have a great day, everybody.